Lesson 1. Simple Sets A set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. For example, this diagram depicts a set with a triangle, a circle, and a square in it. Often we will use such diagrams to represent sets or collections of objects. The objects in a set are referred to as elements. The elements of a set must be distinct by definition. This collection of objects, for example, is not a set because it contains two circles and the elements fail to be distinct. Our typical sets consist of numbers with the elements listed inside of braces like this. This is the set of numbers 1, 2, and 3. Alternatively, we may choose to describe our set as the set of integers greater than 0 and less than 4. More formally, we may use this notation. This is read as the set of all elements x, such that x is an integer, and x is greater than 0 and less than 4. The vertical bar is read as such that. All three of these descriptions refer to the same set. However, we must be careful when describing sets, and we must make sure that our sets are well defined, as we stated in our definition. This description of the set of the three largest integers, for example, fails to be a set because it is not well defined. There's no such thing as a largest integer, so it is senseless to talk about the three largest integers. For convenience, we will often assign names to our sets like this letter A. Also, we will use this symbol to specify that something is an element of a set. For example, we read this as 2 is an element of the set A. We will use the same symbol with a strike through it to indicate that something is not an element of a set. This is read as 6 is not an element of the set A. A singleton set is a set with only one element. A singleton set is different from the element itself and is denoted by the element with surrounding braces. Here we show the number 4 and the singleton set containing 4. We can also have a set with no elements in it. This set is unique and is denoted by this symbol. This is called the empty set. Furthermore, we can have sets which contain an infinite number of elements. These sets will often be given by a few elements and an ellipsis like this which indicates that we should continue the sequence indefinitely. Given two sets, we will specify that one set is a subset of another set if all the elements of the first set are elements of the second set. In this example, B is a subset of A. We use this symbol to indicate that B is a subset of A. A is not a subset of B, however, and we denote this by using the subset symbol with a strike through it. Given sets A and B, we can construct sets from them using setwise operations. For example, this set denotes the intersection of the two sets, which is comprised of the elements that are in both sets. We can write this as the set of all x, such that x is an element of A, and x is an element of B. This set contains these two elements. This symbol denotes the union of two sets, and is comprised of the elements that are in either set. We write this as the set of all x such that x is an element of A, or x is an element of B. This set contains these four elements. This symbol looks like a minus sign, and is used to denote a setwise difference. The setwise difference is comprised of the elements in the first set that are not in the second set. We write this as the set of all x such that x is an element of A, and x is not an element of B. This set is a singleton. Likewise, if we take the difference in the opposite order, we get this. This concludes the lesson.